most of the skull bones are developing from neural crest cells, but not the posterior bones. They come from primary mesoderm, paraaxial mesoderm. Do you remember that? Maybe neural crest cell will give you secondary mesoderm. Most of the skull bones. See, this is the diagram. Understand. If you are looking at this area, this is all neural crest cell derived. Maybe anterior lateral skull bones, maybe mandible bone, maybe the hyoid bone, maybe the malleus incusans tapes. They're all from neural crest cell. Anterior lateral, anterior lateral, anterior lateral. So facial skeleton, yes. Mandible bone, yes. Hyoid bone, yes. Malleus incusans tapes, yes. All from neural crest cell, yes. But not the part of parietal bone and occipital bone because they came from paraaxial mesoderm, primary mesoderm. Okay, then what is next? Next is, you have to remember, when you are looking at the skull at birth, things are called fontanel. What is fontanel? See here, as the skull is developing, there is anterior fontanel and posterior fontanel. And there's a mastoid fontanel which is posterior lateral and sphenoid fontanel which is anterior lateral. What is fontanel? Actually, skull bones are growing and they have not yet fused space between skull bones. So, skull bones developing like which bone? Frontal bone was developing to meet with parietal, there was a space. Parietal was developing to meet with occipital, there was a space like that. Parietal was developing towards the temporal bone, there was space, so these spaces are fontanel. And there's a question asking, when is this fontanel closing, when is that fontanel closing? So, when are they closing? You have to understand that uh, when you are talking about anterior fontanel, it is between frontal bone and the parietal bone. And when you are talking about the posterior fontanel, it is between the occipital bone and parietal bone. And what about the mastoid fontanel. Mastoid fontanel is basically the temporal bone which is actually meeting with not only the occipital but also parietal bone and what about the sphenoidal foramen or sphenoidal fontanel. It is when the temporal bone was trying to meet with the parietal as well as the frontal. So this is what? Yes, okay. Let us see which is the first fontanel to Fuse means the bones will fuse and no more space. Future will develop. Which is the first one? Actually, I have two answers. What? It is anterior lateral, the sphenoidal fontanel, two to three months after birth. Similarly, the posterior fontanel, two to three months after birth. You mean to say both of them at the same time? Yes, both of them at the same time. Okay, if you say so. So you are telling that may it be sphenoidal anterior lateral fontanel, yes, or may it be posterior fontanel, two to three months post birth, yes, which is the next one to fuse when space will go off and some suture will form, which is the next one, the mastoid fontanel, what is that, posterior lateral, when one year, if that is one year, fine, which is the last to fuse, last to fuse is anterior fontanel. You will say anterior fontanel when? It is one and a half year to two years. So this is the last two fuse? Yes. And it is uh, one and a half year to two years? Yes. You can put your hand here and check for the CSF pressure. If a case of hydrocephalus till one and a half years and two years. Okay, putting hand here between the skull bones, yes, why? Because you can check the CSF pressure like if there was a case of uh, some, uh, what? That uh, hydrocephalus, you remember that aqueductal stenosis, aqueductal stenosis, internal hydrocephalus, something, something, but internal, this is not internal hydrocephalus. I understand that, but there can be, you can check the pressure actually, CSF pressure. Now remember structures which are of adult size at birth are ear or cycles. They don't grow after birth. So ear or cycles do not grow after birth means malleus incus and stapes. Why? Because middle ear cavity is adult size at birth. Tympanic cavity, middle ear cavity is adult size at birth. Yes, even the tympanic membrane. So tympanic membrane, the lateral wall of middle ear cavity. Yes, lateral wall. 
Remember, tympanic cavity, the middle ear cavity has a lateral wall, tympanic membrane, and it has a content, bellus incus tapes, they are all adult size at birth. And also the mastoid antrum, mastoid antrum, mastoid antrum here, deep to this area, yes, it is adult size at birth, birth, yes it is, even the internal ear. You mean to say maybe cochlea, vestibule or semicircular canal, whatever, yes. So you mean to say middle ear, inner ear or adult size at birth itself, yes. Who is not a fetal size at birth? That is coming as a question. Remember roof of the middle ear cavity, what is that? Roof of the middle ear cavity, what is roof of middle ear cavity? That is tegment tympani, roof of the middle ear cavity, tegment tympani is not adult size at birth. Okay, who else? You know this mastoid process appear at two years of age. Mastoid process appear two years of age. Why? Because retraction epiphysis by sternomastoid. So when the baby is moving the head after birth, then there will be some cartilage. That cartilage will ossify to form mastoid bone. But that mastoid bone is a traction epiphysis. It will come out at the age of two years. It is absent at birth absent at birth and uh, what about the external ear canal that is growing after birth you know in a baby if you want to do otoscopy it is a different angle pulling the ear and if you are doing it in adult it is different angle so so that means when a baby is born external auditory canal is different and it keeps changing after birth and the station tube, yes, it also keeps changing. The angles of ostation tube, because the station tube comes from middle ear cavity to the nasal pharynx, those angles keep changing after birth. It's growing after birth. So these are some gam cues which you have to be careful about. Now we want to talk about some pneumatic bones. Recently one question came, they gave you a skull x-ray and putting an arrow. What is this sinus? What sinus? Like frontal sinus, ethmoid sinus, sphenoid sinus, or oh, pneumatic bones with air? Yes. Okay. Let us discuss then. You will find that there is frontal sinus in the frontal bone. Yes, frontal sinus, frontal bone. Then what is the sinus of the nose? Sinus of the nose is ethmoid bone, so ethmoid sinus. Ethmoid bone, ethmoid sinus. So you are telling that the nose bone is ethmoid bone? Yes. And ethmoid sinus? Yes, ethmoid. What is behind the ethmoid? Behind the ethmoid, you have sphenoid bone. So, so it is the sphenoid sinus. Sphenoid bone is a pneumatic bone? Yes, it is. Where you keep the pituitary gland. Pituitary gland is kept in sphenoid bone? Yes. And it is having some sphenoid air sinus? Yes, phenoid air sinus, it's a pneumatic bone. And which is the largest sinus? Largest. You already know who is largest, this one. Who is this? This is maxillary sinus, the largest. So maxillary sinus is the largest sinus, yes. Why do you want to know this pneumatic bone? Everybody knows the pneumatic bone. What are you trying to do? I am just telling you the relation because we have to see that in x-ray and I am telling you one more thing. What? What is one more thing? Do you know that uh, mastoid air cells? Mastoid air cells, are you trying to say temporal bone is pneumatic? Yes, temporal bone is pneumatic, mastoid air cells. So these mastoid air cells, yes. Are you trying to say temporal bone is a pneumatic bone? Yes, remember, temporal bone is a pneumatic bone. It has mastoid air cells. I think this is middle ear cavity. Yes, it is middle ear cavity, of course. I think this is the eustachian tube which is going to connect the middle ear cavity with the nasopharynx. Yes, it is. I think it is having a roof of the tegment tympani. Yes, that is the roof of the tegment tympani here. I told you, tegment tympani, which is roof of the middle ear cavity, is uh, growing after birth. But the middle ear cavity and middle ear cavity is actually adult size at birth. Mastoid 
antrum if you say master antrum is adult size at birth so master antrum is adult size at birth yes and you are telling that the middle ear cavity which is uh, here is adult size at birth yes but not the eustachian tube eustachian tube is growing after birth tegmen tympani is growing after birth there are some structures which are growing after birth one more that is mastoid process you don't have mastoid process at birth then when the mastoid process will come it is a traction epiphysis it will come at around two years of age